Hey guys, um, thank you everybody for, for joining us today. Um, what we at Clovaris have done, and, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of, well, you know, I want to stick this, I'll let Andrew go in and kind of address the team, and then I'll, I'll start kick it off and uh, go there. But Clovaris has put together um, in our briefing center uh, the first iteration that I'm aware of of the VX Rail with VCF functionality. And so today we intend to cover that both from a sales perspective as well as an in depth technical coverage. So, Andrew, uh, if you want to go ahead and do your intro. Uh, sure. So, um, I'll go ahead. But on the, on the call, we have the modern data center team, the sales team from the, the Bay Area, but by uh, James Thomas. So, um, these are the sellers. And uh, we also have the uh, Bay Area NBC pre sales engineer as well. So, that's what we have. Excellent. Thank you. So, uh, so on that note, why don't we go ahead and get started? And I'm going to preface this by saying, look, Steve Kaplan is one of the best in the business from a v VMware perspective and the VX Rail environments. At Covaris, he's our practice lead for that effort. And he is really the best person to kind of deliver this message to your customers and to us. And he will give us the technical demonstration that he would give your customer when you bring them in and we have these kind of conversations going forward. So before he begins, I just wanted to kind of, you know, overview for the sales team what the message really is for us and what, what it is that we're going to explain to the executive team. Basically, what VxRail does, and we're all very much familiar with VxRail, it, it, it provides a great optimization for uh, the infrastructure and the environment, allows a one-button management offering for, uh, for, hold on a second, I got some background noise there. Um, at, it allows you to do one-button management, and uh, if you need to do updates, it manages all the hardware compatibility lists from firmware to software to, you know, for all the hardware components and allows the admin to uh, distinguish and click a single button to do those upgrades non-disruptively to the environment. It's a very compelling story. And what we're talking about here with VCF is an extension to that story. What we're looking at is from a VMware perspective, which wasn't included in that VxRail description I just provided, we are looking at the software-defined data center. We are including the networking components of NSXT. We're including the compute components of the Dell infrastructure. We're including the storage components of, of the vSAN and, and uh, that's part of the VxRail. We're uh, including all the ESX components from VMware and then the VRA. And, and Steve's gonna go into great detail, but all those things I'm listing have to be managed, updated, upgraded individually, ad nauseum and requires a lot of time and effort from admins to do. This product takes all of that effort away and distills it down to a single button upgrade push and a single pane of glass environment for managing going forward. It's very compelling. It does allows you to save uh, a lot of time from an admin's perspective, resulting in the do more with less mantra that we always talk about with our customers. And then it also, uh, allows you to easily scale your environments so you can add these and grow. So there's a lot of compelling messages from a sales perspective that we're going to present, and those are the highlights of those. And so without further ado, Steve is going to kick this off, and then I'll chime in from time to time, but he's going to go into a technical demonstration of what your customer will see when they come in and take a look. Steve? Thank you, Mr. Cohn. Um, so just to level set, this is the core, the, the slides we're going to talk about um, over the next 15-ish minutes is the core of the message we use to deliver to Department of State Hospitals, which we just closed a really big deal with yesterday running on the X-Rail for their um, core data center in Sacramento. That will be all VCF on top of the X-Rail. Um, and the reason I bring that up is the message here is all about auto automation, orchestration, of life cycle management of the infrastructure. Um, that's the base message. That's that's what organizations are looking for these days. They want infrastructure to get out of the way. They don't want to have to sit here and spend a week, two weeks, a month out of their quarter 
having to go figure out what interoperability is between all of the data center platform products they have, particularly all the ones that are provided by VMware. So that, that is the core. You're gonna hear me talk about everything in the scheme of lifecycle management. And that, that is the message that's resonating. That was the message we led with when we started doing VxRail. Um, and it's a message that customers can easily understand. And when you're talking C-level, that's what they wanna hear. They wanna hear how they can get more productivity out of their existing um, you know, labor force, um, or maybe they're even being asked to do more with less. So th this is a message that I find resonates well. It was important to me when I managed a fairly large infrastructure. Um, and let me get into it. So the, the base of understanding what VMware does and, and how they look at the world prescriptively is through the lens of VMware validated designs which are basically the blueprints that we can use to either build a standardized architecture that a customer can take forward with a very prescriptive um, set of components, um, prescriptive specs, et cetera, et cetera. Or it can be used to build a reference architecture, which can be a little bit more modular and can have a fit based on what needs to be done for a particular region or um, a particular availability zone even within that region. Um, these are really important to understand that this is the base of everything that matters when we start talking about VCF. VCF is built on top of the VMware validated design in terms of um, taking that reference approach and um, operationalizing it and productizing it. Um, it starts with what VMware thinks of or calls their bill of materials, which is basically for a particular VMware validated design. It's basically the set of products that um, are part of that VMware validated design. What that really means is that those products have been extensively tested to ensure interoperability and the resilience of them. And it's really done that way so that as you're going and doing upgrades and all of that, you're not spending time thinking about, do I need to go to this version of VRA to be supported with this version of vCenter to be supported with this version of vROPS? Um, this, this is something that when, when I was on the operation side or when I led an operations team uh, would kill us for days to weeks at a time. And it's a huge benefit to customers. Um, I mean, really the reason they care is about all of these factors, right? Um, we wanna be able to accelerate their time to be at the most recent version so that they're not behind the eight ball trying to scramble to get upgrades done when a version of vSphere goes into life and they haven't touched it in three years. We wanna increase their efficiency. We wanna de-risk. Um, all of it, and we want to drive agility. And, and above all of that, what we really want to be able to provide at the end of the day is an easel and a canvas that customers can go and draw paintings that really turn out as uh, business value to product. Hey, so Steve, this is Mike. Do you, mind, yeah. do you mind if I do a checking question with the audience real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so folks, we, I mean, what Pete has, um, pardon me, what Pete, um, what Steve has gone through, we end up coming in from a services standpoint and doing cleanup all the time for customers that have let their environment get out of whack with all those components. It has a huge impact on their operations. And again, this is what the essential message is, right? That these validated designs and, and what you're offering with BCF um, cleans up and takes us to the next level from a lifecycle management standpoint. Anybody in the audience, you know, um, Tim Cutting, Spencer, um, Tom, I mean, do you, are you guys seeing the same thing? I mean, do you agree with that? Let's start with that. I want to make sure we're on the same page. And, and keep in mind, you're probably on mute if you're trying to speak up. Are you guys yeah, still here? Tim. Uh, Tim here. I was uh, double muted, of course. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's exactly what we're we're seeing. We're definitely in sync with you on there. The, the challenges that we're having with many of our customers is is doing exactly um, what you had stated around lifecycle management, having to deal with interoperability. So we we're in sync with you. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Okay, carry on, Steve. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mike. I I probably should have taken a pause there anyway. Um, <laughs> so if you think about what, VM, what VMware's view of the world is here is uh, we started that bill of materials. That bill of materials gets turned into a VMware validated design. 
And from there, you get your opinionated product, which is the Ember Cloud Foundation, which is built directly on top of that VVD. So what we're actually doing as part of this whole release matrix, if you think about it, is you get all these products that get updated, like we saw this over the last few weeks with Vsphere 7, NSX T3, um, and the VRealize suite. Um, and that forms a net new release of a VVD, which spawns a new release of VMware Cloud Foundation, which is built directly on top of that. So whenever there's a new VVD, you're going to see a matching VCF release come out for that to drive the um, upgrade and life cycle of your SDDC to that release. Um, at, at the base, th this is really, uh, this is the best way I've found to just kind of think about what VCF is. Um, it's taking that sort of extensively tested um, underlying framework that VMware provides, and it puts a nice wrapper around it to provide all of your base software-defined capabilities, whether that comes in the form of compute with vSphere, whether that's storage with um, vSAN, or that's networking services with um, NSXT. Then, of course, you can add cloud management capabilities in on top of that through the VRealize suite, um, getting better network um, visibility through the Realize Network Insights. Um, to provide more of a holistic and um, I'm going to say more encompassing overall solution that, again, the, the, the big thing about this is, is that we're not talking about these as point solutions that have to be managed independently of each other. This is a set of capabilities that work together, they interoperate, and the entire life cycle of all of these things can be integrated into the same platform. Um, one thing that came up in, in the conversation we had yesterday, and I do want this to be interactive, so if you have questions, feel free to stop me um, and ask. I'm happy, I, I like to keep these KPSCs very uh, fluid and um, focused on conversations so yeah, you, you can get the most value out of them. Um, but the important thing to know is, is that the VRealize suite isn't something that you have to A, implement at the same time, nor is it something that you have to buy at the same time. The, the, the base of VCF, or Cloud Foundation is going to be vSphere, NSX, vSAN, and SDDC Manager. That, that's the core of the product. Um, you can add in the vRealize stuff, but you don't have to do it all in one shot. So I just want to be clear about that. Like the instance we have right now, I've got vROPS and Log Insight in there, but we didn't deploy VRA for various reasons right now. Um, how this all kind of plays together talking about lifecycle is through SDDC Manager. And that's really the, the thing that glues everything together and builds all of those relationships and those dependencies to figure out um, from a VVD bill of materials, um, what actually has to be done in what order to properly handle the lifecycle capabilities of your SDDC. And I would, I would inject uh, here, uh, Steve, that, uh, to the team uh, that's listening, this is really the key. I mean, um, back to what I said at the very beginning, there's one single pane of glass, there's one environment that the admin uses to manage all these moving parts and pieces that are automatically stitched together through VCF. And the SDDC manager is the, is where we're focused on. That's the nexus point, right, Steve? So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Um, now, the, the, the thing that has historically been the struggle when we start talking about even implementing VCF prior to what just got released this month with um, vSphere 7 has been the lifecycle management capabilities of the underlying hardware. So previous releases of VCF that wouldn't have used VxRail um, would have had to still deal with all of those underlying hardware um, lifecycle tasks that VxRail manager handles today out of the box. So that's why um, we're really hyped on this overall stack as a solution because VxRail actually integrates right in with VCF so that all of the lifecycle benefits you get from VxRail with having your hardware management um, for heart, for like drivers and firmware, all that still managed the same way and integrated the same way. It's just managed upstream with an SDC manager so that you don't have to manage each of your clusters independently with baselines and all that. You have a prescriptive approach you're taking, and you have a holistic view to the entire infrastructure itself, as opposed to um, thinking about your hardware one way and the other and the, uh, the infrastructure services running on top of it through a separate uh, lens. Does that kind of make sense to everybody and set the stage for why um, 
things are the way they are and why this is such a big deal? If nobody's going to respond or while you're unmuting yourself, I just want to point out the, the graphic on your screen right now indicates what was earlier mentioned, which is you have VxRail posing a huge operational uplift to your customer, but now you layered on SDDC Manager with VCF uh, functionality, all stitches all that together, makes it very seamless from a VMware perspective yeah. and now the, the VxRail perspective with, uh, with the Dell piece um it gives you a holistic view of the entire environment it's very powerful so hey steve yeah i've got here yep. uh, it would be good to give some context of why this slide was so important when you went in and talked uh for that hour and a half just on this slide with DSH. DSH. Yeah. yeah so dsh yeah okay so for those on the call, um, you don't know what they're talking about this was a eight million dollar deal right steve that would just close that yeah why don't you go background yeah so i i, I think that the, I think the VCF and the extra part was about 3 million of it, but that's nothing to sneeze at either. Um, so what Scott was just referring to was, is that in December, um, I got called up to Sacramento to, to go sit down with um, the fine folks at Department of State Hospitals, because um, I'll just say that there was a, that we, we were, they were having a very difficult time understanding why they should care about VCF in general. Um, it hadn't been explained particularly well by the, the VMware folks. So I came in and I sat down with them and I basically said, hey, we're gonna sit here in this room until you at least understand why you should care. I don't care if this is the way you decide to go. It, I think you just need to understand what the benefits are based on what I know of your organization. And what we really did was, is we did start talking about it from the VVD side like I did here and then brought it up to this slide and made sure they understood that what we were really talking about for them specifically was a platform that uh, got them all the benefits they were seeing from VxRail out in the field where they had deployed it to, at the time, I think, Scott, I think there were up to like four sites um, with another yeah, two five. that are still on deck to get, okay, are we done with five of them there? Okay. Yeah, there's yeah, five, so but you're right, there, there's a couple left to be deployed. It, yeah, so, you know, we wanted to bring those same benefits to that. And, and they were on board with the extra. They saw the benefits, they saw the value. They weren't understanding why, if they already own NSX, why they should, why they needed DCS. So we really wanted to come in and explain, look, you're gonna deploy the X-Rail and you're gonna put NSX on top of it. And you're gonna have to manage that NSX implementation on your own. You're gonna have to go and deal with interop. You're gonna have to go deal with this. You're gonna have to go deal with that. What we wanna give to you is something that lets the infrastructure get out of the way and lets you start driving the business value that comes with what you can do with these products together once they're set up and configured properly. Um, and hey, that Steve, was the I a good question for you. Of, yeah. So I was just, when we got started on the, talking about the deal there, I was just kind of curious if it was, you know, was it just business as usual was the competition or was it, and it sounds like they were kind of on board with VxRail already. So it was more of a, just how to tie it all together conversation or there's something more yeah, there? Well, it, 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 yeah, so they were sold on VxRail. Um, they'd seen very um, positive outputs from the first few sites they'd done. It, it was more about why they should do VCF more than anything. Um, it just, it hadn't been presented to them in a way where they were seeing the value of doing it. And that's what it boiled down to was, is that we had to put it in a contextual term that mattered to them. And in the state of California, particularly, and I don't think this is, I don't think this is any different than any enterprise that you would go and talk to. The one resource you can't get more of are people. It's very difficult to go out and hire. And even more difficult than hiring is finding people that are competent. It's just, it's a fact. Um, so we wanted to, position this as a thing where what we were talking about was was instead of putting it in terms of it's this this product we wanted to put it into terms of this helps your people be more productive by not needing to focus on the nuts and bolts of an upgrade that, that's what we wanted to make the big point of. we wanted to say hey you've got all these pieces most of them are dell or vmware together um, how do we make this so your life is easier? So what your people can focus on is on the things that matter as opposed to getting an upgrade done, which is a thing that matters, but nobody wants that to be the thing that they're losing a person for 
weeks at a time to go figure out, plan, and execute. That it's that it's all about being able to present solutions that um, provide operational value. I guess is the way to look at it. Um, does that help? No, that's perfect. Just uh, uh, three seconds of a little bit more context. It's not it's not necessarily that. Uh, I or uh, anyone else didn't go in there and show the slide and talk to it. The benefit of having the partner go in and have and be so engaged is that it's an outside ent entity discussing and saying the same things that you are. And sometimes it just comes off differently. It's it's clearer sometimes. So it was hugely beneficial to have Steve go in and discuss this and and get them to understand. Um, what it is that it's going to be doing for them. Yeah, uh, and I can tell you when we were trying to set up those slides, um, I was on the phone with a specialist from VMware. And I think in 45 minutes, I said the word life cycle about 25 times. And it was mostly in the context of we're not talking about life cycle enough. It, it's it's the only thing that matters in this in this case. And for like the, the Covaris folks, if you listen to what Leon was saying Monday morning, um, the reason he kept talking about it in life cycle terms is because I've been talking about it that way, and it's just been beaten into its head. That that is the message. It's it's all about life cycle. It's all about um, cutting operational costs. That's what it's all about. Hey Steve, I got a question about that. This is Jason, yeah. if I may. Yeah. So I, I get the message loud and clear that it's all about life cycle management, but I've also been hearing the message. I think that it's about owning the operating model. I haven't heard you talk about that yet. It's the same thing. What's the difference? Well, I, I understood the, the owning the operating model part to be about the ability to move between different clouds and not getting locked into AWS's no. operating model, for example. No, no, no. This is an on-prem solution. There's no public cloud component to this, other than if you want to extend out into VMC on AWS. This has got nothing to do with public cloud. And that's that's an interesting point to be uh, observed. And so that's another technology called VMC uh, that there are other components that can be layered in here. But with when we're talking about strictly VCF on VxRail, it's it's lifecycle management for the on-prem environment. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm confounding I, I mean, you then. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you can so you can deliver this in a cloud in a cloud operating model. Um, but that that's more of a, a question of consumption at that point, as opposed to why a C level or a director or a manager would care about spending the money to upgrade into VCF or buy a stack that's that's referenced for VCF on VxRail. Um, anything else before I move on? Well, this is Mike. Let me throw one out there. How about can you? Talk in terms of the metrics that some of these managers think about when they think life cycle, like break life cycle down to an example that I would say is, listen, how frequently can we, are we able to patch, right? You know, or how yeah. far do we get behind those types of metrics? Well, well Mike, yeah. So here, here's the thing is that number one, every organization is going to be a little bit different. The, sure. the question that the, 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 the question of what those metrics are depend how heterogeneous you are. Um, so the more variations you have in hardware configs, like if you do a refresh every year, um, you're probably looking at, at the very least, two to three different generations of hardware just because of the terms of, you know, how hardware gets re refreshed within the environment. So the question you got to ask yourself when you're thinking about these things is, is how many different variations of hardware do I have in terms of different network cards, different, um, different disk controllers, different, uh, I guess processors would be less important in that context, but, um, in the context of vSAN, um, how many different disk models do I have to deal with from both the cache and the capacity tier? There, there's a lot of variables that come into play. So, uh, um, and I respect that and I get that, but what I want to, if, if we don't leave this uh, audience with this today, I, I'd like to come back to it in a follow-up. Because when you talk, when you go in and you talk to me about life cycle, it obviously what would be ideal is we are able to attract prospective clients into um, our lab or, you know, currently do that in a, in a virtual way to walk them through a KPSC on VCF on VxRail and the benefits of it. So we need both our own sellers and, you know, your sellers to be evangelists around this and you go out and you talk lifecycle, but then you got to be able to throw a couple things on top and say, listen, 
how long does it take you to get patched in there and how far are you typically behind? Like just the common metrics, Steve, that irrespective of well, yeah. genius or not. Right, but, but, but hey, Mike, I, I, just to be clear, this is supposed to be a KPSC though. So uh, can, can, I just want to keep us on track. So like, like I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can come back yeah, to I it. I, just, I think that's that, important yeah. for sellers, yeah, okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and yeah, so this is the base of, of that pitch. It's just, this is just the base of it though. Um, the last point I want to bring up on VCF is if you have customers that are interested in VTure with Kubernetes, uh, VCF is the only way to acquire it. It's only available as part of an ELA where there's VCF in it, and um, it is a term-based license. So today, that's the only way to consume it. So I, I think that's an important thing to understand and make sure that um, our customers understand if they're interested in going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Um, so I'm about to jump into the demo. I've only got one more slide and then um, I'm getting into the, the fun piece. So this is a quick map of where we're at in the KPSC right now. Um, we're running VCF 391. We will be upgrading to 4.0 just as soon as there is a VxRail build that will allow me to do that. Um, we've got pretty much everything in the stack deployed except for VRA. I don't have a enterprise PKS workload domain or a Horizon workload domain right now. Um, we're having conversations about if those are things we want to have discrete hardware for right now internally. Um, and if you so, could just point out, Steve, what is mandatory on this that gets installed on, by default? Yep. Yeah, so um, what's, what's going to be installed by default is going to be SDDC Manager, vSphere, obviously vSAN comes with vxrail. NSX for vSphere will come as part of the management workload domain, and we're using NSXT in our workload domain, um, and we've added the vRealize components other than VRA into it. So we've got anything with a checkbox is part of our environment right now. Ready to go? Any questions before I uh, move on to demo? Yeah, quick question. What does KPSC stand for? I might have missed Which one of ours? Proof Solution Center? Yeah, Covar's Proving Solution Center. Okay. So the, the value to the KPSC, the, and we're not gonna go totally into that right now, but what we end up doing at Covaris is we highlight and demonstrate an operational environment that looks very similar to a customer's. It's not, um, uh, uh, it's not only one vendor that's in there. So we'll start them with ServiceNow and say, here's a ticket coming into ServiceNow, here's the request, here's the automation factory, you're gonna have uh, an output of this VM with all the network components uh, allocated and, and designed and dis deployed, all the micro-segmentation work done, um, the laying down of your, your workload, all that end-to-end -end and pop it out in just a few minutes. We actually show a customer how an automation orchestration workflow will work in their true life environment with applications that they would normally have in their environment stitched together. And that's why VMware likes to come to Kovaris to do some of these demonstrations because they, they haven't put stood up all these different applications that are similar to what a customer has. So they can't show how VRA works in conjunction with those other components. And so that's some of the value and some of the power behind what we affectionately term the KPSE or the Kovaris Proven Solution Center. Hey Steve, Tim hey, here. Um, on hey, the Jim. the v realize uh, automation is that something that you guys are going to be adding in the near future? So we're not adding it until I move it to VCF four because it's I I don't want to pitch VRA seven, frankly. <laughs> um, I've got v, we have VR. So to be clear, we do have VRA in the KPSC. I just don't have it as part of the VCF stack. And it was mostly, there, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons why, but I'll, you could boil it down to VRA7 just isn't an interesting thing to demo and look at as part of this. And I wasn't gonna invest the time into all the stuff we would have to do to get that functional for an actual demo as part of ECF. Okay, um, and your, your expectation is to move to VxRail 7.0 along with the Realize Automation 8.0 in the yeah. near future? So, okay. well, as soon as it's available, yeah. We'll, we'll be okay. we'll be playing that out as soon as it's available. Yeah. The rail the rail version should be GA55. By the way. Okay. Perfect. Then 
we'll maybe we'll maybe we'll have it done before the end of our Q2, which we align the calendar. Um, hopefully, it's just it's a question of time because doing a full reset isn't a trivial process, unfortunately. Um, so let me just jump right into it. Um, to level set, so you guys understand what actually gets done as part of a VCF deployment. And if you can make that this bigger, Steve, that'd be great. So, well, uh, that's fine. Good. Giving you guys a sense of just what gets done as part of a VCF deployment. We deployed out overall, and again, this is all the automated stuff that gets done as part of implementation. None of this was done manually. Um, 26 VMs, some of that are NSX components to do like um, overlay networking. Some of them are edges, platform services, controllers, um, SDEC manager, login site. It, it's a lot of stuff that gets implemented. This is a very opinionated, very um, prescriptive solution. And it's, you know, the intent is, is that you have a standardized platform that you're deploying so that you're not thinking about how did I deploy this data center versus how did I deploy this data center over here, or I did this cluster one way, did I do this cluster over here the same way? Um, it, that, that is the intent behind it. It's about standardization, commonality, and being able to ensure as much from a lifecycle standpoint um, as consistent as possible. As we get into it, um, you know, I talked about it. This is SDDC Manager. There isn't a ton to the UI, which in my opinion is a very good thing. Um, this isn't, a, if your customers are living in here all the time, they're not doing their jobs right. This is intended to you know, serve as a place to be a dashboard and to serve as the place you go to, to, to do your life cycle stuff, whether it's on a quarterly basis or when new VVDs and VCF implementations come out that need to be done. Um, the big things that I want to talk about here do boil down to the lifecycle capabilities. Um, so the way VCF works is you typically will deploy what gets termed as a management workload domain, and that's where all of your core backend services are going to be running from. So that's where your management vCenter runs. That's going to be where your vRealize components run. That's where your NSX components are going to run from. And as you can see, as we look at our management workload domain, here's all of the services that are actually tied in with that management workload domain, and that would be covered as part of a lifecycle operation. These are the things that will be getting would be getting upgraded if we were doing a lifecycle op. Um, if say VCF 392 were to come out, um, as you go and you look at like where updates would, if there were any, they'd be right here. And the thing to note when we look at this is if you think about it. All those components that we were just talking about, we've got all of their instantiations all listed right here under the management workload domain. And more importantly, we've got the instance itself and the version of it across the board for all these components, whether it's lifecycle manager, eh, life cycle manager for vRealize, whether it's log insight, vROPS, we've got versions, we've got this, we've got the instances, um, all of our NSX components, our ESX components, and then most importantly in this context, the X-Rail. Again, it's integrated and they talk to each other. They know what SDC manager knows exactly what it's talking to if it needs to go and perform lifecycle operations on the X-Rail cluster. And the, the big value here, as much as it is in, in having all of this in one pane of glass to look at in view, is the fact that what VMware's done with this is they've implemented a bunch of pre-checks that can get done to minimize the risk associated with doing these upgrades. Because that's the thing that really kills in a lot of cases is that there's a bunch of stuff that a person would have to go through and check and validate if they want to go and be sure. But there isn't necessarily even a, com a comprehensive list of where all these things are. So you're kind of, since these are all independent products, you're going and looking for these things independently and trying to figure out what matters for this product versus that. Um, what they've done here is they basically built in all of these checks to go and run ahead of time so that if there's something that needs remediation before you go and upgrade your VCF instance to a new release, all these things have been validated to put as little risk into an upgrade cycle as is necessary, I mean, as you, as you could hope for. Um, I, would, I, would interject, much, but. I would interject really quick here that 
for those of you who are familiar with operations, I believe the number is around 76%, the last I saw, of outages or issues that have come up in, uh, in you, you know, an operational environment have been self-inflicted, i.e., you know, somebody fat-fingered something or there was an upgrade done that broke something else. And so the goal here is to remediate that number by bringing everything in and managing it intelligently so that upgrades are performed with the least um, amount of risk possible to the end user. So theoretically, you know, obviously there's, there's no silver bullet in life. I mean, always something could possibly go wrong, but what he's showing you here is these pre-checks go through and say, we know this stuff works together. We know this works together, this version, this code release, all these combine and work together in a very um, um, supported way. And if you click this one button, we'll do the pre-check for you. And then you click the one button, we'll do the upgrade for you. And that's that's huge. Yeah, orchestrated and in sequence to actually ensure that you don't break interop as you're upgrading components, because there is a uh, very delicate and tender dance you need to do as you're upgrading these things to ensure that um, you don't break something in the process. It, it's especially with the number of components we're talking about this being, or potentially being, um, or even at base with just VCF um, being vSphere, NSX, and vSAN, just, just those two can be a, a, a fun process of going through and figuring out the proper interoperability of. So it, to me, this is like where the money is when we talk about VCF, is in this, is in this piece right here. The, the, the fact that we know the versions of everything that it is right now, we have our, um, our relative baseline of knowing that when a new VCF instance comes out, our new version of VCF comes out, you're gonna be able to go and compare these versions against whatever the new bill of materials is. And then it provides a mechanism to do that upgrade for you um, in an automated way so that, um, so you can take all those benefits that come with VxRail today with the life cycle of hardware and vSphere and bring that up now include NSX and um, optionally the, the vRealize suite if they're using it. Um, the only other two things I like to show when we're talking about this is that if we did have updates, this would be the place you'd go and see it in update history, which seems like an obvious thing, but um, you'd be shocked at the number of times I've walked in and talked to customers and I said, so how are you tracking when you're doing these upgrades and, and being able to, to you know, build correlation between when things done and what happened. And the answer is, is, well, for the most part, we're just doing it through tracking our either change management process or you know, through service tickets that come in. And the thing is, is that if that's the way you're correlating everything um, manually and you don't have a, a single place to go to view that history of how that environment has evolved over time, I think that can be a problem, especially when we start measuring the time that this could be deployed out to in years um, and not just months. Um, so I, I think it's an important thing. I wish I I'd had an upgrade that I could have done so that we had some history, but um, hopefully, you know, message is understood around why that is. Um, the only other thing I like to kind of bring up and show is the fact that also part of this, it isn't just life cycle of the components but also all of the SSL certificates that are used as part of those services as well. So everything down all the way through from NSX manager, your platform services controllers, vCenter, LogInsight, SDDC manager, vROPS, and even the vXREL manager, all of these things have now have their SSL certificates being managed centrally for the infrastructure, which this is almost as big of a deal, frankly, as anything else in the environment, if only for the fact that a lot of these products have their own independent ways of dealing with SSL certificates. So if we can provide a single pane of glass to, um, to, to manage and install certificates uh, for an organization, th this is a net win because this, this is a ton of time that ultimately gets spent in doing like from an operational standpoint. And you know, if we can give the thing that says upload and install and done rather than having to document each individual process, it's a, it's a huge time saving. And I just want to share a quick story for those uh, reps that are listening in. This is actually a really big deal. I was in an organization not long ago that performed an upgrade, but overlooked the SSL certification being expired. The wrong one was applied, brought down the whole network. 
Like it, this is a big deal. Like if you, if you, you know, something as small as this, if you're not managing it correctly, you're going to run into a world of hurt. And so this is another area that at VCF really shines. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, SSL starts to, we're, we're always one of the banes of my existence when I was um, on the operational side. So, hey, Steve, just to, yeah. Hey, um, I don't want to, I don't want to sidetrack. Obviously, this is Sean, but um, have you, yeah. when you're having these conversations, have you had the operational cost versus cost of the VX rail VCF conversation? Like, how do you overcome that objection? Because this is not a cheap solution, especially for, you know, smaller customers are price conscious. Sure. So um, the, the answer is, is that this isn't going to be a fit for everybody, Sean. So the, to, to me, and, and Kevin can, Kevin will, will tell you this too, is the conversation I always start with is, do they want software to find everything? And if the answer to that is yes, then we need to have a conversation with them about what that actually be, right? And, and educate on what that, what the cost of going down that path is. NSX is something that I think is, is, is usually the, the interesting one to have to talk about and overcome because it's, it's the hardest one to quantify in smaller organizations, the value of theoretically. Um, but I, I think like the, the, the conversation around VxRail is actually really straightforward and easy because every organization that's running a VMware environment, they've got storage arrays, they've probably got either a fiber switch or some sort of um, some sort of a switch that's handling storage connectivity, and then they've got their host. So they're dealing with the lifecycle management challenges of that every day. So that's actually a very straightforward conversation. Um, it, it really does boil down to whether or not NSX is the right fit. And if NSX is the right fit for the customer, um, I don't believe that this is actually something that's a challenge at the price point frankly, because they're either going to understand the value and, and know why they need those networking services, or they don't need those networking services in my mind. But um, hey, hey, Russ, I think you're online. Do you have uh, any thoughts on that? Hey, Steve, this is Scott. Just a, a couple more two cents from, <laughs> from my perspective. If they're having a tough time with the cost, um, that's where a TCO comes in. Because if you take a look at a couple of the components where they're going to save money um money on the number of sockets which are going to be fewer on the on the vx rail also they're probably already spending some portion of that money on on vmware uh software that's where it it became pretty important with uh working with the vmware se um andrew at least for us at dsh because he was able to to show um the cost savings of moving from the traditional three tier to um the vcf and so you bundle in the software, you do the TCO, and you come out looking like, well, I'm not spending any more on, you know, status quo. So this must be a good idea, at least from a financial perspective. Right. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Um, John, does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Steve. You did. Okay. okay. Thank, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Mr. Bell's there is did, one quicker than I did. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. I have one quick question about kind of how most of these deals go down. Is it, are you guys uncovering these deals and taking them, you know, going, finding their VMware side of the house, or is it more of a VMware knows what you're capable of and they kind of pull you guys in because, you know, they, you know, one of the two partners can pull it off? Yeah, well, so in the state of California, it's kind of an interesting thing because um, a lot of the, a lot of transactions are contract driven. So we're one of the two schedule holders on the state of California contract for Dell Technologies. So um, it, particularly in SLED for, Cal, for the state of California, um, we work very closely with the entire SLED team from the VMware side. And they're constantly in our offices because we're like right in downtown in Sacramento. Um, and we have a very good working relationship with those guys because it's a pretty small um, circle overall. And I mean, that's kind of the way it works in sales, right? People kind of migrate from one company to another as they decide to do things and everybody kind of knows each other. So it makes it a little bit easier there. Um, so we do a lot of co-selling and co-engineering, particularly in the state of California. Um, we do a lot of work 
in all the regions with VMware. Um, and we do a lot of these types of sessions so that, um, that the local teams understand our capabilities and know they can leverage us for doing demos like this. And being able to bring the full bear of a story that may encompass not just um, you know, the Dell portfolio or the VMware portfolio, but talking about the larger interoperability and integration story around um, other things that you might want to bring in, say like around VRA, uh, we might want to talk about VRA plus Puppet or VRA plus um, Ansible Tower. So um, it, we, we can drive that message and that's sort of core to our business and how we like to do things. Hey, Steve, let me, that if you don't mind, let me also pipe in here. So, Andrew, it's kind of a mixed bag, you know, it, it comes down to individuals, right? You get those people that are go it alone types, right? And then you get folks that uh, leverage, you know, collaboration of their virtual teams and especially the folks that have seen success with us in other environments and realize, oh, wow, this makes me a whole bunch stickier, more relevant. We're talking about all the things that touch, you know, their environment from an integration standpoint and Typically, you know, we get to the table sooner on projects because of that. So that's what we're striving to do in this awareness with you guys. Um, and we do the same thing with VMware. And uh, it, it, like I said, it ends up being a mixed bag depending on the individuals. Okay. Makes perfect sense. But yeah, I, I'm amazed at the capabilities you guys have. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And like, so like tomorrow, I'm actually going to be talking to uh, Pack North or Russell and I are going to be talking to our um, the VMware Pack Northwest SEs. Um, about just overall capabilities and what we can do. And the, the you know, um, Sean was pretty clear when he were talking about how to, to build that conversation is they're actually interested in understanding what we can talk about as VMware Plus. So VMware Plus Puppet, VMware Plus Ansible, they're actually really interested in understanding how we can help them drive the message of who VMware actually is now which a lot of people still think of VMware as a hypervisor company. Um, the, the term I like to use for VMware is that they are an abstraction company. All they care about is being able to take what you're doing and abstract it away so that you can consume it on whichever platform you decide you want to consume on. Um, that, that, that is who they are trying to be these days. Um, so, that's pretty much in terms of talking about VCF, there isn't really much else to talk about in terms of a demo. Um, I'd like to open it up to questions and uh, just have an open conversation. We've got 10 minutes, so uh, feel free to fire away and we will try and get you answers. Yeah, really good. Um, I was just more curious about the VMware validated designs and things like that. Are you seeing customers go down that route where they don't want to be actually all they just would rather build their kind of own you know, their validated designs that fit, you could drop VCF on top of or you try to steer people away from that? Well, so you could put VxRail in with a VMware validated design. I actually just did that. Um, I've been working, I spent the last two weeks actually building a reference architecture for Pitney Bowes. And um, basically the, we, we took two approaches in how we built that reference architecture is we told them that our recommendation was to go in with the XRail as a platform because um, of just how the constraints were laid down for us in terms of what they cared about. But we gave them an alternate option because they do have certain workloads that in some cases do have to have compute and storage scale in different metrics. So we wanted to have at least an alternate approach that was more of a commodity driven platform so that if they decided they were more comfortable going down the road of having vSAN be sort of the base of what they do because they did want software to find everything, um, but also have the ability to put in a, um, a, let's just say an island of compute that has storage that can scale up 3X what the compute needs to. Um, but that, that isn't where we are in terms of our recommendations as a regular thing. It really does become a, the VVD is, is the blueprint itself it isn't opinionated on what the hardware it is, but more what the software capabilities on top of that hardware are. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Questions, anything else? Um, Steve, this is Tim. I just, I just wanted to comment it regarding DVD and, and DCF. I like in the, in the slide deck um, how you, originally spoke to VVD, the value prop, and how that's transitioned to VCF 
and how BCF provides the automation that incorporates uh, the X-Rail. So, nice job. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, yeah thanks, Tim. I, I mean, the reason we start there just for everybody is because a, a lot of, I, I think it's really easy to say it does this, but without like being able to bring the receipts and say, this is how, this, like, this is sort of like where this comes from and how it continually is being updated and validated and done. Um, I think it helps build the trust that this isn't just something that's being done fly by night, but it's something that's that's essential to the overall strategy and success of ECF. Um, so thank you. Anything else? Feel free. Thank you, Steve. I really appreciate you taking the time today to do this. Um, I think this is really informative for everyone. Um, uh, you know, if there's no other comments from anybody in, in the in the group, we can probably end it there. But again, we'll send out the recording in case you missed it or you want to forward it off to you know somebody else that maybe have missed this meeting. So, well, no, I think Kevin, I appreciate the time. It's uh, you know, it's really impressive to see what you guys are doing. I can't wait for uh, your kind of expansion down here in SoCal because we're always looking for you know great partners and uh, I think you guys will do very well down here so I just appreciate you know taking the time thank, thank you all and if there's other things as a follow-up that uh, you know would augment our ability to uh, you know get people on the wire and, and walk through these types of demonstrations let us know a couple things came to my mind like I want to follow up with Steve just kind of the general metrics that people relate to life cycle management that we should all be, you know, prepared to talk to because that also plays into an ROI, right? Ultimately, yep. if there's things when you leave this conversation, you think about that that we could do to uh, make this even stickier. Please let any one of us know. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you.